morning, PBJH, and welcome to day six of Nora Week. Uh, we have a very special guest here for Nora Week. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, and she's joining us this morning on WPJH. So uh, what we're going to do is ask some questions. We all did question slips earlier this week, uh, and we didn't get quite a chance in the presentations to ask some of those questions. So I have our question box here, and we're going to kind of pull some questions and ask uh, Nora. Uh, Nora, did you enjoy your presentations tomorrow to start? Yesterday. Yesterday. Today? Yes, yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. Yesterday. I, I did enjoy doing okay. those presentations yesterday. There's a lot of kids here. Okay. And uh, I wish I had time to have met more of them, so hopefully today I, I will. Yes. yes. Isn't she just uh, ignorable? <laughs> okay. All right. So, question number one. How long did it take you to write the book, Anything But Typical? It took me about three months to actually write the first draft, and then about a year and a half to revise it and edit it and go through the process and before it was published. Now, do you have to turn in a final copy to the publisher for them to read? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I do it all through the computer now. Okay. Just email it right in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay, can you hear me? <laughs> can you hear me now? <laughs> All right. Okay, question number two, Nora. Where did you attend college and what was your degree in? I went to SUNY Purchase, which is State University System of New York, because I'm from New York State, and I got a degree in literature. They didn't have a writing degree. Okay. They believed in reading and learning to write by Liter really, by reading, which okay. I actually believe in as well. And how long after you graduated did you have your first book published? Whoa, a long time. I, was, I graduated in 83, and I was published in 2001, and I'm really bad at math, so I have, anybody, I have no idea how long that is. 18 years? I think. I have no English idea. English teacher, Adam. <laughs> yeah, right, we don't, okay. we don't have to do math. We don't have to do math. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> Okay, question number three. Uh, is anyone else in your family a writer? My two sons. And what kind my, of my uh, two sons. genres do they write? Okay, I'll pl I can <laughs> my son is a rapper. Nice. Okay. And he has a, he, he has, his, his rap name is my maiden name, is Raleigh. Ah. R-A-L-E-I-G-H. Okay. So he's, so that, so he's on, you know, YouTube and Google. I think it's Raleigh Music. Facebook. Facebook plug, plug. Yeah, plug. And my <laughs> younger son is a sports writer. Okay. Baskinsports.com. That oh, was so nice. cool. Thanks for asking yeah, me that. <laughs> nice plug. Nice. <laughs> okay. Uh, so a question regarding the book. Uh, when Jason was writing the story about Benny, why did uh, he make him into a, or why did you make him into a dwarf? A dwarf. Yeah, I picked that very specifically to, to mirror his disability, something that was physical that you could see that would have would you know not that you would want to have accepted just okay. like he wants to be accepted you'd want to be accepted for what you look like and who you were and I used it as a, a metaphor okay Very I good. worked really carefully on picking that was he so was he did you write him intended to be a door I, 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 I wrote Jace, Jason wrote a book about like I'm writing about Jason Jason's writing I was trying to get that, you know, writer, a story within a story within a story. So. Uh, why did you call it Anything But Typical, and did you ever consider a different title? That's a really good question, because Anything But Typical was not my title ah. at all. It was um, Boy Meets Girl, okay. and the editor said that that was, sounded like a, a Meg Cabot book, like a chiclet book, Boy Meets Girl. And they didn't want to give the wrong impression. So my editor came up with that title. I, I didn't at all. And I and I had you know, I had the right to say I didn't like it, but I liked it. Was that the first uh, suggested title that they gave you? Yeah. She came up with it and I, I said great. But boy me to know what Okay. Very good. Uh, how many more years do you think you will be writing? 
age. I don't know how many years it's going to be. <laughs> how many okay. more years? Oh, you can't hear me? Uh, I'm scratchy. <laughs> Technical difficulties, but we got it. Hopefully, I'm not scratchy. Okay. Should I give my mic to her? Would that be? No, I think we're good. Okay. All right. Uh, why does Jason imagine Rebecca differently than when he meets her? Yeah. Um, just like everybody has a fantasy of how something's going to go when they're anticipating it, Jason had fantasies of how it was how meeting her was going to go, how it was going to unfold. And I, instead of just saying this is what he was fantasizing, I actually use it as a literary device. So you saw him fantasize, so you, as the reader, actually thought that might be happening. Mm -hmm. And you were supposed to figure out when it didn't happen that it was his imagination. Okay. I know it was a little confusing, but I, want, I, like, I, wanted, it, I wanted you to be confused. Because okay. life is confusing. Yes. Uh, how much uh, actual research did you have to do before you wrote the book? Anything but typical? Well, you know from last night's presentation, but um, I did a lot of research. I read a lot of books. Um, I talked to people. Mostly I read autobiographies and memoirs so the, of autistic people, some movies, and, and then used a lot of my own memories and feelings of, of from my life to imagine how it would feel, which was not hard to do okay. at all. Very good. Very good. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Okay. Uh, what do you do when you're not writing? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, well, I have two children, but they're grown. So I used to drive to a lot of basketball games and cook and make beds and go shopping and... Um, <laughs> all those mom things, but I like to swim, and um, I got really into yoga this year, and I cook, and I love my dogs and my kitty <laughs> so much. I go for walks in the woods. Nice. Okay. And I teach. I, I do a fair amount of teaching. Okay. Very good. Um, did you ever consider uh, including pictures of characters in your book? That's a really good question. If, if, if um, you won't remember, but when I was a kid, books of this age group, for this age group, were illustrated. And you know why they don't anymore? Okay. It's too expensive. Mm -hmm. They don't put pictures in books. Very rarely. It costs the publishers money. So I don't really have any choice. But one of my books does have pictures uh, um, in the company of crazies. Okay. Uh, finances aside, would you include yeah. pictures if you could? Oh, that's. So was it more expensive? Not in this book. Okay. No, I definitely wouldn't. Not in this book. But I always liked pictures in books when I was a kid. Yeah. Okay. Pretty good. Uh, <laughs> this is a good question. Is Nora Rowley Baskin your pen name? <laughs> Meaning, is it not my real name? Right. Is it like? It's no, like that's my name. name. It's okay. Nora, which I always hated when I was, you know, Norma, Nola, Laura. <laughs> But it's Nora, and Raleigh is my maiden name, and Baskin is my married name. My okay. kids are named Baskin, as in BaskinSports.com. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Raleigh <maybe. laughs> Music. <laughs> Can we put that on the screen? <laughs> yeah, have that. <laughs> uh, do you travel to places uh, for book signing, or do you do a lot of uh, book talks and traveling? I tried not to travel too much. I'm a homebody, and I miss my dogs. Mm -hmm. But um, I do a fair a fair amount. I've been been to California, okay. and Maine, and Vermont, and Ohio, yeah. and a lot of local places. Yeah. Okay. Uh, along with that, a question I thought: What is your uh, of all the books you've written? What's your top selling book? This one. This one. Okay. <laughs> because I, I guess the school interest in it. Okay. And I had no idea that was going to happen. 
Uh, who most inspires you to write? Who? Myself. Okay. Definitely, I mean, I guess from having heard the presentations yesterday. But my family's all artists. My dad's a painter. My brother's a guitar player. So it was in my family to, to, do, to be, ex, you know, to express yourself somehow. So I grew up with that as an option. You know, artists that come from families of bankers and lawyers, and I'm always so impressed with that. Like, they must really have bucked the system. I didn't really have to buck the system. It was part of my family. In, in fact, even my grandfather's an artist, so. Very good. I mean, that's really a, an interesting question. Uh, what was your first job that you remember? Oh, I guess babysitting. <laughs> I picked yeah. strawberries. My town is was, you know, agricultural. New Paltz, New York, there's apple orchards and strawberry fields. I think before I could actually work, you know, with working papers at 16, I definitely picked strawberries and string beans. I babysat, and then I waitressed. My first, like, real job was waitressing. Okay. It was the first job I got fired from, too. When, <laughs> when you were a waitress, did you ever think that you would be a writer? I always wanted to be a writer. Okay. Yes. I definitely didn't want to. Yeah, lots of writers waitress, too, but, <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. It's good money. It's like really, it was the best job. Uh, if you were in Jason's mom's position, uh, would you do the same or different things? Well, that's a really good question because I, I sort of pretended I was Jason's mom. I was Jason. I was the, the dad. If I could be that benevolent, if I could have been that loving and kind, it's, you know, he was an ideal father, but I probably would have been more like his mom you know she wants him to be safe and happy and everyone wants their lives for their kids to be easier and as moms sometimes we don't come off as as accepting as we should I try to be more like the dad okay. with my kids Baskins <laughs> <I'm kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> I do I try to accept my the rap singing and I do um. Did, you ever, did, did Jason, this is a common question, did Jason ever actually really meet Rebecca? Yes, he does. He okay. does. He fantasizes all those, you know, false endings, those false meetings. But, yes, he does. He does eventually okay. meet her. And it doesn't go exactly as he would have liked. Okay. And is Rebecca blind? No. Okay. No. A the only question. thing, you know, a lot of writers, you need, you, a, a book is supposed to be what you make of it and how you take it and how you interpret it. And I believe that is true. But I didn't. In, I did intend for people to realize that those were his fantasies. Okay. I think the birthmark and the blindness; those were things I thought of having happen, and then chose not to. Okay. Very good. I did that one. <clears throat> Do you think you're going to write another story about Jason or a sequel to this book? You no. Know, you know, I never do sequels. I, the book's are complete in itself, and. Um, I'm not, I don't, nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. Uh, when you wrote anything but typical, did you hope to raise awareness about uh, autism? No. I, I, um, as I said last night, I didn't write a book about autism. I really wrote a book about Jason and I really wasn't thinking in terms of that. I, I was thinking, I, all, all my books at some level are about acceptance, accepting your life, accepting who you are. So it was just a different character and a different situation, but I think that's a theme throughout all my books. So it wasn't about aware, uh, raising awareness. That that happened, wow, has been amazing. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, I, it was, um, it's been amazing hearing what some of the teachers have told me. And it's blowing my mind. Kay. They told you as a hippie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what types of stories or genre do you like to read the most? That is the easy question. I only read realistic fiction. Okay. I, I, and some, and memoir, which is nonfiction. But I never read fantasy. I never read science fiction. I watch it on TV. I love Star Trek and X-Men. But I only read realistic fiction. I'm not even sure why, but... That's what I like to read. Okay, I think we have time for one more question. Uh, 
is Jason Blake a real person you know, or is he uh, completely fictional, or does he relate to somebody that you know? He's completely fictional, as opposed to characters in my other books, which definitely are people. Like, if you knew my life, you'd know who, you'd even know who, like, the bus driver was and the English teacher and the, the, the mother and the father and the sister. But in this case, I made him up, and then as I was writing, he kind of became a conglomerate of of myself and you know people I knew, but but he's more fictional than probably any of my other characters. Okay, very good. Uh, well, thank you for joining us this morning on WPJH. Uh, it's been a great experience for our school to have you visit us, and uh, some of the students will be seeing you later today. So thank you so yes, much. Yes, thank you. It was it was Sean. It was Sean uh, Lightful. Yeah. No. Yes. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.